You're listening to WJMU. There's absolutely no cause for alarm. The studio is not on fire. The automated system has not stopped working. And the general manager of the station has not been tied up and beaten about the head and neck with a rubber chicken. Why are you doing this? I said I was cool with you doing this series! Silence, bourgeois pig! <laughs> Ow! The theater students are taking over the airwaves. For the next 30 minutes, these airwaves are ours. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Nothing! They could always change the station. Bryn? On it. <laughs> Ow! That hurt. Sound the battle cry! Watch out! Here we go again. It's time now for the Radioactive Frog Juncture, a program written by a person and performed by various other persons. And now, here's Rebecca Jaffe. Thank you. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of the Radioactive Frog Juncture. You'll have to forgive my castmates. They all have Unified's brain. And if Unified wants his brain back, he'll have to send us the 50 thou. It's the beginning of a new semester, and we students have hit the ground running. Hell, we hit the ground just trying to walk. No one shoveled their sidewalks for the longest time. And the few who did shovel their sidewalks didn't salt them afterwards. It's a damn good thing none of us had to walk to the studio to do the show right now. You see, this isn't a live program like most of the shows on this station. This is a recording. This is a recording. This is a recording. This is a record. Thank you. Most of you, I'm sure, are listening to this program while sitting in the comfort of your own homes. Well, so are we. Not me. I got a hot date tonight. Why do you microwave all your fruit? I don't know, ma'am. As a matter of fact, this series was originally meant to air over winter break, so a good chunk of it was actually recorded in December of last year. We spent half a month rehearsing and recording this series. We each took time out of our incredibly busy schedules to churn out this four-episode miniseries on top of all our other responsibilities. We had final exams! All of those late nights studying! Final projects! Oh, the glue, the paint, the feathers! Our regular jobs! So many feathers! Some of us even had shows to do at the end of the semester! Lucky bastards! And what do we get in return? What do we get for sacrificing our time and our sanity for the loyal listeners of WJMU? Nothing! Nothing! Nothing but the joy of knowing that somewhere, somewhere in this bleak and lonely world, there may be one, just one person who might tune into this program. We'll settle for a possum! Just one person might tune into this program, and maybe, just maybe, our little show might make them happy. Even if it's just for the half hour, if we can make just one person forget their troubles, then it'll all be worth it! That really stunk. Why, you! <laughs> Ow! And so, for the next four weeks, we'll be regaling you with all sorts of weird comedy sketches, like the following. So, my sister got stuck nursing all those little baby possums back to health. Oh my. That must have eaten into her budget something fierce. Oh yeah, but those possums grew up to be such cutie pies. Wanna see? Oh, for sure. Yeah, let's see them. Here they are. Oh, for cute. So adorable. Yeah. Oh, it's been so long since we've had a nice little chat like this. I know, we hardly ever get together anymore. Well, I tell you, after the week I've had, it's nice to just sit and talk with you guys. I have had such a week. Oh, what happened, Barb? Well, I just got these new next-door neighbors, and they are a bunch of weirdos. I went over there to sort of welcome them to the neighborhood, see if they needed any help moving in, and there was this odd-looking fella that answered the door. Kind of short, dressed like a landscaper, and he had these weird kind of knees. Anyway, he opens the door and says, My name is Torgo. I take care of the place while the master is away. Woofta. And I peek inside a little bit, and I see all these hand sculptures. I mean, all these sculptures of hands put wherever a sculpture of hands could be put. It just about gave me the heebie-jeebies. Oh, my. Of course, I just say hi, hand him my plate of cookies, and I get right the heck out of Dodge. Smart. Oh, Barb, those new neighbors of yours sound downright spooky. Oh, yeah. They're not as bad as the last fella, though. You know, the one that kidnapped and ate all those kids? Oh, now he was a scary guy. His wife was nice, though. Shame she got blown up. Yeah. 
Well, I had a rough week too, don't you know? The darndest thing happened to me. I got abducted by aliens! Good gracious, Lori! When did that happen? Tuesday night, while I was watering the day lilies, this big white beam come out of nowhere and lifted me up into this spaceship. Once I was there, these big slimy purple things approached me and started looking me over, scanning me with those weird scan gun thingies. Oh. Then they shined this bright light in my face and I was out cold for who knows how long. When I woke up, I was lying on a surgical table with a slimy purple baby on my chest. Ugh. Then they beamed me back down with the little critter. When we got back down to Earth, wouldn't you know it, the darn thing looked just like a normal human baby. Wanna see? Oh, for sure. Yeah, let's see. Oh, for cute, he looks just like you. I could just eat him up. I know. I'm gonna have a heck of a time explaining him to Harold, though. Well, girls, you just would not believe the week I had. I can hardly believe it myself. What happened, Evelyn? Well, I was in the kitchen doing some cleaning when all of a sudden I get this horrible feeling come over me like a sudden realization that the powers that be in this universe seem to mock my very existence. That my whole life has been this one long fool's errand. I get so overcome with this deep, profound sadness that I black out for a good three days. When I came to, I was standing right at the Pacific frickin' ocean. I mean, feet in the water, looking out at the big blue void ahead of me. I still have absolutely no idea how I got there. oof -da. You know, that happened to me once, only I ended up on stage at the Apollo Theater in New York City. I must have been doing pretty good up there till I snapped out of my funk. Oh my. Hey, Mom. Oh, hi, son. How was school? Good. Uh, Mom? Yeah? Why is there a half-dead man tied up in our garage? Oh, for Pete's sake. We must have got so caught up in our conversation it completely slipped our minds. Yeah, we'd forget our heads if they weren't screwed on. Well, we'd better get back to work. Those organs aren't going to harvest themselves, don't you know? Right. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Oliver McCheese. And I'm Helvetica J. Windpipe. It's Hour 78 here at Telethon Center, located in beautiful downtown Berwyn, and we're still here raising consciousness for a great cause. That's right, Ollie. The past few decades have not been kind to the sitcom legends of yesteryear. We lose more and more of them with each passing year, and it's becoming more and more important to protect the ones who are still here with us. And so we're asking you, out of the kindness of your hearts, to please donate your vital organs to Mel Brooks. Sure, he doesn't need them now, but it's always best to stockpile just in case. With your help, people, we can ensure that Mel Brooks will continue to grace our screens and our planet for at least another hundred years. Can you imagine a world without Mel Brooks? I can. And it is a bleak, hopeless netherscape. And it'll be all your fault if you don't give Mel Brooks your kidneys, you cruel Nazi bastards! Whoa, whoa! Calm down, Ollie! I'm sorry, I just get so emotional. You don't know what that man means to me. What he means to America. All Mel Brooks does is give and give and give. Don't you think it's time we gave back? I know I do. Let's keep those phones ringing, people. I mean, it's not like you're doing anything important with your vital organs. Your pancreas is just sitting there producing precious insulin while you're on your couch playing Among Us or Fortnite or something, or doing some unsavory act with a girly mag when that pancreas could be contributing to the betterment of our country. I mean, sure, we haven't perfected pancreas transplants yet, but we will one day! And if not us, Japan! God bless Japan. They love Mel Brooks, why don't you? Let's go over now to Chet Pantaloons at our tote board to see where we're at. Chet? Thanks, Helvetica. Well, as you can see behind me, someone has stolen our tote board. However, one of our producers has been keeping track of all the donations we've received so far. So far, we have received 19 lungs, 24 gallbladders, 45 spleens, 61 livers, 18 hearts, 12 eyeballs, and half a duodenum. Thanks, Chet. Now, I know that sounds like a lot to some of you out there, but that's barely enough to feed a family of eight. Please keep giving! We've got a special guest here in the studio tonight. She's the daughter of Wumbo Mart founder Zachariah Wumbo and the heiress to the Wumbo Mart fortune. Here she is, folks, Miss Marguerite Wumbo Jones. Thank you, Oliver. Thank you, Helvetica. Can I say what an absolute honor it is Can to- Can the small talk. Get to the good stuff. Okay. 
Well, on behalf of myself and the entire Wumbo Mart family, it is my pleasure to donate to this worthy cause, the cryogenically preserved testicles of my late father, Zachariah Wumbo. I'm sorry. His what? His testicles. They were his most prized possession. How dare you! I'm sorry? I don't know how much crack it is you smoke that would make you think that copy genius Mel Brooks, a man who's written more classic movies than you weigh, a man who learned how to drum from Buddy Rich, a man who fought in the Battle of the Bulge, literally playing a part in Hitler's downfall, would want anything to do with your father's shriveled up genitalia, but if you don't get out of my sight right now, I'm going to gut you like a carp and season your entrails with lemon pepper and garlic salt! Alright! Jeez! Unbelievable! You know, she once killed a lady. People, we cannot emphasize enough the importance of taking this cause seriously! We've already lost Betty White! All of the Golden Girls are gone! The entire cast of the Mary Tyler Moore Show! And half the cast of the Carol Burnett Show! Please keep giving! We'll be right back. The Give Mel Brooks Your Vital Organs Telethon will return after these messages. Yes, you name it, and I've got it right here at Derringer Honda and Toyota. Like this brand new Toyota PT Grand Cherokee Denali, which you can lease for only- Stop the music. Stop the music. Hey, what's going on here? I'm Levi Smith. I represent the estate of Leslie Gore. Do you have permission to use this song in your advertisement? Well, I- That was a rhetorical question. You don't. I wouldn't be here if you did. This is a cease and desist order. You are hereby prohibited from using this or any of the late Miss Gore's recorded material in any of your advertisements. You are also prohibited from referencing any of her recorded material in printed advertisements. Listen, buddy, I blew a whole 200 bucks on this session. It took me a whole month to come up with this campaign. It take me a whole other month, maybe a whole year, to come up with anything this good again. You gotta let me use that song. Look, is there any kind of loophole that would let me use that song? Well, if you're that desperate, there is something. Ah, but you'd never go for it. I'd go for it, I'd go for it! What is it? Well, you can use this song and be protected from legal action. But first, you have to hop on one foot, rub your tummy, pat your head, and sing the alphabet song. That's it? Heck, <laughs> I can do that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G... H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y and Z. Now I know my ABCs. Next time, won't you sing with me? There, I did it. Now can There's I? There's more, Mr. Derringer. You also have to pet a grizzly bear. A grizzly bear? Where the hell am I gonna find a girl? Ah! <laughs> nice bear. Nice bear. Let me just pat you on the head a little. <laughs> good bear. That's a good. <laughs> <laughs> now, can I use the song? There's just one more thing. One more thing? This is the very last thing, and then you can use the song. You have to say something nice about my shoes. That's it? That's it. All right. I can do that. I can- Whoa! What is it, Mr. Derringer? Oh! Nothing! Nothing! Just taken aback a by the, uh, beauty! And, uh... Oh, I can't do it! I can't do it! They're hideous! They're the worst shoes I've ever seen in my entire life! I wanna cut your feet off and force feed them to ever made those god-awful shoes! Alright, I think we're done here. No, wait! Wait. What? They look... Comfy. They are very comfy, thank you. Alright, Mr. Derringer, you may use the song. Groovy! Hey, Hal, let's take it from the top. You name it, yeah, he's got it. Ooh, you name it, yeah, he's got it. Yeah.
best, you name it, and I've got it right here at Derringer, Honda, and Toyota. Like this brand new Toyota PT Grand Cherokee Denali, which you can lease for only $169 a month. And now we pause for a station break. Oh, crap. Well, that's why Mom says not to play ball in the studio. And now for station identification. You're listening to WJMU, 89.5 The Quad. And we're back. To close our program for tonight, we'd like to present a one-act radio drama written by Samantha Ellis and Alan Bennett, two of the United Kingdom's most renowned playwrights, in their first and only collaboration. They wrote this audio play together after they happened to run into each other while sightseeing in Stratford-upon-Avon, the birthplace of that great bard, William Shakespeare. It premiered last year on BBC Radio to universally positive reviews, with one critic calling it a triumph. With the gracious permission of Mr. Bennett and Miss Ellis, it is with great pride that we here at WJMU present to you, Hamster Woman Meets the Magenta Marmot. It's time once again for another exciting installment of The Amazing Adventures of Hamster Woman. The alter ego of hotel heiress Priscilla Hargrove, Hamster Woman has dedicated her life to thwarting evil and fighting for justice. We take you now to her stately mansion in beautiful Megalopolis City, where she is planning a surprise birthday party for her loyal butler Sappington with her young ward and crime-fighting sidekick Marlene Barrow, aka Gerbil Girl. Gosh, Priscilla, this is going to be one swell party. I'm glad you think so, Marlene. I just hope Sappington enjoys it. After all, he's been my faithful companion since childhood. So, while we're setting up in the main hall... Mrs. Hargrove, Miss Barrow, lunch is ready. Thank you, Sappington. Marlene and I will be down shortly. Very good, Mrs. Hargrove. So, anyway, while we're setting up, you'll distract him by... The hamster phone! Hello, Commissioner. Hamster Woman, Megalopolis City needs your help. The fiendish magenta marmot is wreaking havoc once again. Gadzooks, what's that villainous vixen done this time? She's kidnapped Darius Bernathas. The famed operatic baritone from Lithuania? The very same. He was warming up in his dressing room before his concert last night when the magenta marmot and her henchmen burst in and captured him. That's awful. Don't worry, Commissioner. Gerbil Girl and I are on the case. We'll track the magenta marmot down, bring her to justice, and set that songbird free. Come on, Gerbil Girl, to the hamster poles. Holy Pavarotti, Hamster Woman! How are we going to track down the magenta marmot? It's simple. During our last tussle with our brightly colored culprit, I managed to place a microscopic tracking device onto her jacket. Wow, Hamster Woman, you sure put a lot of forethought into your crime fighting. Well, you must admit it makes these sketches easier to crank out on a regular basis. Now we just have to determine her coordinates using the hamster computer. We'll have her location in about 30 seconds. So... How's... Stuff? It's cool. There's this one guy I think I'm kind of interested in. I met him at... Aha! We have the Magenta Marmot's coordinates. She's currently headed towards the Megalopolis City Opera House. Holy Tabaldi, Hamster Woman! Do you think she's about to strike again? I believe so. We'd better call them to let them know. In the meantime, we've got to get a move on. Quick, to the Hamster Mobile! Me, 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 me! La, ah, 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 ah. Madame Carlotta, this will be your best performance yet! I know, Giuseppe. I was born to play this part. Oh, the people will love it. Picture it. Carlotta Benevitti, the world's greatest mezzo-soprano, cast in one of opera's most prestigious roles, Carmen. Yes, and it's about a damn time, too. Madam Carlotta, I've just received some horrible news from Hamster Woman. Apparently someone is coming to the opera house to kidnap one of the performers. She doesn't know who it is they plan to kidnap, but to be safe, she suggests we cancel the performance tonight and move all of you singers to a safe place. Cancel the performance? Puh! The show must go on. Who is this a Hamster Woman anyway? Why, she's Megalopolis City's most feared superhero. Criminals tremble at the mere mention of her name. 
In my country, we do not take orders from a hamsters. The show will go on. Oh, I'm afraid you don't get much say in the matter, Madame Carlotta. Excuse me? Do you know who I am? I am the world's foremost mezzo-soprano. I am Carlotta Beneventi. Oh, I know who you are. Boys, grab her. <laughs> hey, get your hands off of me. Let her go, you hoof. Apparently you don't know who I am, Madame Carlotta. I am the Magenta Marmot. Come on, boys. Load her into the van with the others. All right, gerbil girl. Now we look for the magenta marmot. You're too late, hamster woman. The magenta marmot, she already come and kidnap Madame Carlotta. Ah. <laughs> Holy Caruso, hamster woman. We were out foxed. It appears as though we were my catchphrase spewing companion, but fret not, we've got a few more tricks up our sleeve. Well done, my boys. We've collected quite the cast of songbirds here. Darius Bernotas, Isabella Dominguez, Wilhelm Schumacher, Craig Smith, and now we have the lovely Carlotta Beneventi to complete the set. Ah, yes. It's all going according to plan. You let me out of here right now! Pipe down, you! You won't get away with this, Magenta Marmot! Oh, on the contrary, Mr. Bernotas. I do believe I will. Why are you doing this anyway? It's simple, Mr. Bernotas. Before I was the most feared criminal mastermind in Megalopolis City, I was a promising young composer. I even applied to the Megalopolis Conservatory of Music. The Bounders had the nerve to turn me down! They said my music lacked imagination. Well, I'll show them. I'll show all of them! When I debut my magnum opus next Friday, performed by five of opera's biggest names, then they'll recognize my genius. Here's your sheet music. We start rehearsals tomorrow. Brunhilde's a lonely gibbon. It's the tragic story of a teeny little gibbon who gets made fun of by all the other gibbons for being smaller and more intelligent than everyone else. A situation I'm all too familiar with. You have issues, Lady. I refuse to take part in this. This is completely asinine. If you value your life, Miss Beneventi, I strongly suggest you do exactly as I say. When I say sing, you say how high, capiche? I'm afraid your concert's just been cancelled, Magenta Marmot. Hamster Woman! Gerbil Girl! Oh, thank God we finally found her! This is the fifth abandoned warehouse we've busted into and the people in the last one were very mean. Shut up. I mean, they just about slit our throats. They were doing some kind of weird ritual where they were sacrificing a chicken Gerbil and- Gerbil Girl, they don't need to know any of that. I just thought it was weird. Anyway, your evil doing days are over, Magenta Marmot. Is that so? Henchmen, attack! Yeah, boys! Ah! Gerbil Girl, prepare for 81C. Right! Hamster Woman, why are you and your sidekick playing the trumpet? Yeah, how come you two ain't fighting us? Now, Gerbil Girl! Ooh! Curse you, Hamster Woman! You're much too clever for us naughty people. Come, gerbil girl. Let's set these songbirds free. Was I flat on one of the stings? No, you were fine. Oh, good. Okay, everybody, quiet down and hide. He'll be here any moment. I must say, this was very admirable of you, Mrs. Hargrove. Not many people will throw a surprise birthday party for their butler. Well, he's not just a butler to me. He's family. Shh! I hear him coming! You called, Miss Hargrove? Surprise! Happy birthday, Sappington! Oh, Miss Hargrove, you shouldn't have! Nonsense, Sappington! It's the least I could do for you after 40 years of faithful service! No, Miss Hargrove, I mean you really shouldn't have! Ah! My heart! Ah Quick! Someone call an ambulance! Holy Paul Winchell, Priscilla! If that's how he reacts to a surprise party, I don't think he's gonna like what you got him for Christmas! You're right, Marlene. I'd better go call and cancel that stripogram. You've been
been listening to the Radioactive Frog Juncture, and you've done so completely of your own free will. Something to think about. Featured in tonight's episode were the not ready for SNL players John D'Angelo, Nate Early Ochoada, Liz Fetzner, Taylor Hammer, Rebecca Jaffe, Hannah Magee, Reagan McDaniel, Jocelyn Ibala, Owen Peterson, and Bryn Sentner. The sketches were written by Frank Macaluso and translated from the original Esperanto by Lady Constance de Coverlet and her pet hedgehog, Spiny Norman. This program was directed and produced by Frank Macaluso. Be sure to tune in next time when you hear Bryn Sentner say... This has been a Found Ways presentation! Y'all come back now, you hear? I don't actually have to say that next week, do I? No. Oh, thank God. Mm -hmm.